Hola, Connecticut Cult members. This is Jensen Sierra Lambert coming to you from my classroom at Greens Farms Academy in Westport, Connecticut. This is video number one of a series on how to help your students prepare for the upcoming AP Spanish language and culture exam. I have been teaching AP Spanish for 13 years um, and I absolutely love teaching this subject. Um, I've also been an AP reader for quite a few years. I am also um, an AP Spanish consultant for the College Board, and I've collaborated on an AP prep book as well. So hopefully the tips that I share with you today help your students complete the AP Spanish exam successfully. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. The tips that I'm gonna share with you today um, are also applicable to other AP subjects that we teach in Connecticut, such as AP German, AP Italian, AP French. Since the exams are very similar, they're practically the same. So yes, I am going to share examples that are specific to my subject, Spanish, but the strategies are applicable to those other subjects. So hopefully I can, I can help more than um, just AP Spanish uh, teachers. Let's see. So we know that there are two parts to the exam. We have the multiple choice and we have the free response. So today I'm going to specifically talk about the cultural comparison, which is the fourth section in the free response. It is the very last section our students complete right before they walk out the door. At this point, they're tired, they're hungry, um, they're, they don't wanna be there anymore. So it's very important that we provide them with tools and strategies on how to complete that section successfully with the very little energy they have left. Um, so to prepare for the presentation that they record, the students only get four minutes. That's not a long time. So it is very important to practice preparing the presentation in class um, and encouraging our students to write their notes in bullet points as opposed to writing full statements or paragraphs because if they write too much, they're not gonna be able to say it all in two minutes. That's right, two minutes is all they get to record their presentation. So in, this, in those four minutes, they wanna be writing key points, key words, key things in an organized manner um, and they can use it as, as they, they speak spontaneously and freely. Let's see, I wanted to go over a few questions, a few possible questions for the cultural comparison um, so that you know what type of questions our students need to, um, need to answer, right? So, ¿qué celebraciones fortalecen los lazos familiares de tu comunidad? What celebrations strengthen family ties in your community? And ¿qué expresan las bellas artes sobre la identidad de una comunidad? Um, what does art express about the identity of a community? That wasn't a great translation, but I think you get the gist. Um, ¿Qué factores influyen en las relaciones personales y familiares de tu comunidad? Um, what factors impact or influence uh, personal relationships and family relationships in your community. ¿Qué elementos influyen en la identidad de tu comunidad? What elements influence or impact your community's identity? And ¿qué factores afectan la calidad de vida de las personas? What factors impact the quality of life of people in your community? So as you can see, these questions are very open. They require critical thinking skills. They're not straightforward. Um, they can be answered in many, many different ways, which is what I love about um, the cultural comparison and also about the way the curriculum for AP Spanish language um, is set up, it's presented. Um, so these questions are based on the AP themes, right, that us AP teachers are very familiar with. And um, as AP teachers, we also know that um, we have the autonomy to choose the context or subcontext for all of these themes. 
So the reason these questions are so open, right, is because we as teachers, um, each of us may approach each of these themes differently. Um, for example, when it comes down to um, contemporary life, there's a unit that I teach my students about foods that bring people together in a social setting. You may approach it with a different context, but the idea is that the questions that they get on the AP exam for the cultural comparison can be answered in many different ways. And whatever we've done, whatever we've covered in class, could be used to answer those questions, right? So it all depends on the angle on which students approach the questions. So on the uh, for, in, in the cultural comparison, as an AP reader, I want to hear, um, what I wanna hear in the cultural comparison is cultural competence. So students need to demonstrate that they're, they're culturally competent. And how do they do that? They do that by not just providing superficial answers. Sometimes you listen to cultural comparisons that only provide a list of things, a list of products. Oh, on Day of the Dead, um, they eat pan de muerto and they set up altars and they go to the cemetery and you get an inventory. You get a list of things that we associate with Day of the Dead. Um, so, all of that is great. However, it is very important that students also demonstrate that they understand the relationship between products, practices, and perspectives. And what are those? So I have this iceberg here, um, and it's not my idea. This is the cultural iceberg used to talk about how to study culture, how to approach culture. So um, when you think of a product, a cultural product, whether it's in Spanish, German, Italian, French, are the things that we could see above the surface, right? You look at this iceberg, the very tip is what we can see, but we know that the most important and the biggest part of the iceberg is below the surface, right? That's where the practices and the perspectives are. So when we talk about Day of the Dead, for example, it's not enough to just talk about calaveras and pan de muerto and everything that goes on the altar. It's also important to talk about how these products are used. So one way to look at it is to think of the product as the what in your presentation. The practice is the how and the perspective, which is my favorite part of the presentation, is the why. Now, this is one strategy that I teach my students on how to organize their presentation. Um, it is very easy to think of these three things when you're talking about a cultural celebration. So I'm also going to share with you an example that it's not a cultural celebration per se, but you could still find the three Ps in it. Okay, so. ¿Cuál es la relación entre los productos, las prácticas y las perspectivas culturales? What's the relationship between the three Ps? That's what you want your students to be able to explain, to present in the cultural comparison, because that's how they demonstrate cultural competence. And that's what gets them the five on the cultural comparison. All right, so to illustrate the three Ps, here I have a painting that I use for so many different things. Um, I think I used it for a previous uh, CT Cult video. Um, this is Tamalada by Carmen Lomas Garza. Yes, it's a painting. Um, is uh, in, I have my students analyze it and extract the product, the practice and the perspective. Of course, they can see the product immediately. They'll raise their hands and say, oh, the product is el tamal, señora, yay. Um, so what's the practice? Well, the, the family is in the kitchen and they're all helping, they're all contributing. So the practice is they gather for a special event, maybe it's close to La Navidad. Um, maybe they're gonna celebrate somebody's quinceañera and the family all decided to get together at La Casa de la Abuela to wrap up the tamales and prepare them, right? And preparing tamales is hard work. 
you require lots of hands and lots of people because as you can see, it's a big assembly line and you need every everybody doing something different to get the job done. The perspective here, the perspective here could be, see what goes what goes on around the table. So while the family is hard at work, preparing the meat, um, uh, putting the relleno in the masa of los tamales and doing everything else that requires uh, require to uh, prepare a tamal, there are conversations going on. Um, they're telling jokes. They're gossiping, chismeando, right? So all of those things, that interaction goes back to that first question I showed you about los lazos entre familia y entre amigos by preparing the meal together and having conversations, they're strength strengthening their family ties. Um, so that's one perspective. The other perspective here could be um, they're, they're all together, getting ready for either La Navidad or they're getting together uh, to help um, prepare uh, a meal for a celebration such as a King's Canada, right? So you want them to not only talk about what they see, you also want them to infer what's going on and the reasons behind all of that and include that in their presentation. Of course, on the cultural presentation, they're not given a painting. They have to come up with um, a cultural phenomena of their own. Although I've had many students that have used uh, paintings by Carmen Lomas Garza to answer these questions, it's because I use them so much, right? And so they, um, the questions they get on the AP exam reminds them of conversations we've had around these paintings. Okay, so here's one question. ¿Qué factores influyen en las relaciones personales y familiares de tu comunidad? Here's one way to approach this particular question. Um, el mate is a popular beverage and a few countries in South America. I love me some mate. Um, and el cafecito is a very popular beverage also among Spanish speaking communities, but also other communities within the United States. But here I wanna focus on el cafecito de Miami because in my class, we saw this video and we read an article about 305 being el cafecito time in Miami. And there's a hashtag um, called uh, cafecito, hashtag cafecito 305. Now, um, one way to approach it is to first talk about the product of el mate, right? The product of el cafecito, the practice, right? Se comparte, se bebe en todas partes, um, se bebe en las ventanitas de Miami a las tres y cinco, ayuda a entablar conversaciones, um, and then the perspective. Um, el mate is a beverage that brings people together, is a tradition, a very, very old tradition in countries like Argentina and Paraguay and Uruguay. Um, and el cafecito de Miami um, es una costumbre cubana, right? So because of the Cuban influence, in Miami, um, second and first, second, third generation Cuban Americans have used el cafecito as a way to remain connected to their Cuban roots. And there's a perspective, right? So that's one example um, of how to organize the cultural comparison with very, very um, specific information that demonstrate cultural competence. Um, let's see, here's another example. ¿Cuál es la actitud de las personas en tu comunidad con respecto al trato de los animales? This was actually a question, I think, on the 2018 AP exam. And many students, I remember listening to these comparisons over and over and over, many students talked about bullfights in Spain, for example, and compare them to um, 
animal rescue efforts in the United States, right? So they go to what they know, what they've heard either in the classroom, what they've read on their own, what they've heard from um, friends, family members, so on and so forth. Now, one way to approach this, another way to approach this would be, let's see, my personal experience. Um, I was recently in Argentina, and this is a picture that I took in Ushuaia. Um, I was walking the streets, and I saw this, which is a dog feeder. And I found it so interesting. I took a picture and immediately texted it to my son, who's a dog lover. So in Argentina, um, in many cities in Argentina, uh, you see dogs roaming free, which is not very common in the United States, right? Dogs are usually at home, um, in the pound, right? Or in the doggy park, but they're not roaming free. And when you see them roaming free, you immediately think, oh, is this dog lost? Um, should I call animal rescue? What should I do? However, in Argentina, perfectly normal. Now, I find it really interesting that they have this dog feeder on the streets. And it's because in, when you think about the perspective behind this, right? Dogs need to be fed. <laughs> they embrace dogs as part of their everyday life, walking up and down the streets. It's perfectly normal um, to see these dogs without owners. Now, that's not common in the United States, right? So in the United States, again, you'd find a dog at the dog pound or in the doggy park, um, or if you or if you see them walking on the streets, they're usually on a leash with their owners being walked, right? So this would be an example of a um, a, a topic that's not necessarily um, uh, a tangible sort of cultural product, right? Because dogs are animals are not really a product per se. However, the practice that we can extract from this um, is that in Argentina, for example, dogs are fed on the streets, no problem. And these are dogs that um, we don't know if they have an owner or not, but they're fed. In the United States, right, we tend to discourage people from feeding dogs on the streets and we encourage people to report them to animal rescue or to the police just in case somebody's looking for a lost dog, right? Um, and the perspective, you no, know, behind underneath all of this, right, is that we care for animals in different ways. So it's not in the it's not that in the United States we don't care about dogs. We do. We just care for them differently. And that would be an amazing cultural comparison to record for the AP exam um, as far as this question is concerned, right? So what we want to do on the AP exam is organize our information um, using the three Ps, the products, the practices, and the perspective so that we can demonstrate that we are culturally competent. So hopefully um, this was helpful. Um, I will be back with another video on how to write el correo electrónico or the email. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, reach out. I'm happy to help out. Have a great one.